Hey folks, we're going to be going over a couple of items today. The CME that is on its way to Earth and what we should expect when it arrives. We're going to be going over an interesting paper that didn't make the morning news, but for those veterans who have been keeping up with Earth's disaster cycle, specifically the solar system magnetic shift, you're going to find this one pretty interesting. And lastly, after this morning's show, where we were showing some of the progress at Observer Ranch, a number of questions have come up and we will be answering some of those. So first of all, as was pretty obvious from the SDO images, the M-class solar flare released a plasma filament from right next to the active region. It was pretty obvious that it was a widespread burst directly in the Earth facing heliographic longitudes. SOHO confirmed that that CME is a full halo. It is on its way to Earth. Uh, we saw this morning that NASA's Enlil spiral uh, confirmed that it is on its way to Earth. NOAA's now does as well. We'll show you that tomorrow morning. Uh, it is expected to arrive at some point between tomorrow night, Sunday night, and midday Monday. That's from a UTC time perspective. Now, what should we be expecting? As I said this morning, we do not expect severe geomagnetic storms. We probably will get G1 to G2, which is level 1 to 2 geomagnetic storms, which would be a KP of 5 or 6. If we get stronger than that, we will have a pretty good indication that it is because Earth's magnetic field is continuing to weaken. I don't think those forecasts are necessarily all that bad. It was a fairly speedy CME, but the density appeared to be relatively low in the Earth directed position. Um, from a technological perspective, not expecting a whole lot. We will probably see an uptick in electrical fires, perhaps electrical grid issues, perhaps uh, large scale system outages or disruptions. But again, from a technological perspective, it really does need to be that more severe geomagnetic storm. However, from a physiological and psychological perspective, anytime we get even into the lowest level geomagnetic storms, we do see a statistically significant uptick in some of the issues. And this would be for the most vulnerable people in the population. That would be people who are considered high, uh, high risk cardiac patients, those with autoimmune disorders, those who have MS, or who are subject to seizures or migraines. We also know that those who uh, have a clinical depression, emotional instability, those who are prone to getting fog brain, that cognitive loss where you just really feel out of it, um, that's the kind of thing that has been shown now for a couple of decades to be statistically related to even the lowest level geomagnetic storms. And so again, um, not a world-ending CME, definitely of scientific interest, will give us a chance to see how Earth's magnetic field is doing, uh, but more important for the high-risk patients uh, in terms of the space weather health effect that we have. This paper right here didn't make the morning news and it won't make the morning news. There's a fair amount of uncertainty. Um, I don't know how much to trust their analysis, the models, the observations, their conclusions about them. However, for those who have been following and know about the solar system shift, how everything in the solar system is appearing to show changes that are indicative of a magnetic shift, hinting that the galactic current sheet and coming with it, the galactic magnetic reversal, are here at the solar system causing these impacts. This one is important. This one is talking about how the observed solar magnetic fields versus the models used to agree and now they don't. And this happened in the late 90s or early 2000s. Now, what's important is this is the kind of thing that we would absolutely be expecting to have seen back at that time if right now we are indeed seeing the coronal chemistry changing, specifically with the helium, and having that tied to the coronal magnetic field changes. It's one of those things where we would hope that at some point a decade or two ago, there would be evidence of this magnetic shift starting to occur and of course when we see here that the observations and the models which were built on those original observations were tracking very well together and then sometime right around the turn of the millennium that broke and the magnetic fields no longer started to match the models that's sort of the exact thing we would be expecting to see again that paper is not going to be in the morning news it hasn't been in the morning news but keep that little easter egg in mind those of you who are following along veteran observers Last but not least, uh, showed some updates on Observer Ranch this morning. There were a couple of individuals who may have missed this when we had said it previously. Um, the questions were, one, about the public building and why it was constructed, the way it was constructed, everything from um, 
where's the basement to where's the bunker to I see some metal, I see wiring going through the walls. Folks, there is the public portion of the campground, the welcome center, where all the observer events are going to be. And it is an appropriate building for the public RV campground and education center. There is a basement to it, by the way. Um, but it's very different from some of the survival structures that we're going to be putting on the ranch. And so please make that distinction. There's no question about um, the different needs for the different structures that are going on the ranch. Um, people were commenting, where are all the trees? I don't see any trees. Uh, yeah, that's a good thing. Um, for those of you who saw the mountains directly to the north, and for those who know anything about the Colorado mountains, the Colorado mountains are basically a giant forest. About a thousand meters away, there's more wood than we can ever use. On the other side of that, when the disaster kicks up between the wind and the lightning, I don't want to be anywhere near trees. Being in the middle of a forest might seem lovely, might seem wonderful, might seem like a place of abundance, but when the worst of this happens, you are in a minefield. A little something to keep in mind for when things get bad. It'll be fantastic up until that point. And then when all the trees get felled, maybe not so great to be amongst them. Might be better to have them right next to you, as the ranch does. Lastly, people... Uh, might have missed this in the morning news, and I guess missed this every other time we, they've said it. Uh, we are in phase two right now in terms of uh, taking on business partners for the ranch. There are perks that come along with that, of course. And uh, if you are interested in that, go to ObserverRanch.com down there below and contact, uh, contact us through the website there. So we're going to have our eyes open at some point Sunday night through midday Monday, again, UTC time, for that CME impact. High-risk patients from the physiological to the psychological have eyes open and try to really keep your mind at ease. Don't forget, the power of the placebo effect is your friend here. Tell yourself that it's just energy. Your body can handle it. Trust me, if the placebo effect can basically nullify biology, chemistry, and physics just because you think something, that's magic. Use it to your advantage. Interesting paper basically falls perfectly in line with the solar system magnetic shift being caused by the galactic current sheet and galactic magnetic reversal, all as part of the Earth disaster cycle. Again, that one's not going to be in the morning news. Thank you to my children for being exceptionally loud right now. Gotta love them. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.